In the previous movie, we used the MASH toolkit to build a pixelated replica of the Earth. In this movie, we'll overlay a plexus effect over top of the planet, as well as a few small bolts, and then form a ring around it. You can either continue working from your previous file, or load the provided MASH UI Part 2 Start, provided in the link in the description. Before creating a plexus effect, Let's use what you've already learned to create some random little pipes to float above our globe. This time, rather than a cube, we'll start by creating a polygon pipe from the polygons shelf. In the attribute editor, go to the poly pipe tab. Reduce the subdivision axis to 6 to give the pipe a more nuts and bolts like appearance. Also, set the radius to 1.5, height to 0.5 and thickness to 0.75, so it appears like so. Go to Create, Mesh, Create Mesh Network to add it to a Mesh Network. Now if you look at the outliner, you can see we have two. Since you don't want to get these confused, now would be a good time to rename these objects to something more meaningful. Double-click Mesh 2 and rename it Mesh Bolts. Do the same for Mesh 1, naming it MASH Earth. While you're at it, rename their respective ReproMesh objects as well, since these represent the actual geometry for each respective network. Finally, rename PSphere 1 to Earth Sphere, PCube 1 to Pixel Cube, and PPipe 1 to Bolt. With that done, select the MASH Bolt's waiter. Like the previous movie, we'll use our Earth Sphere as a guide to distribute these bolts, so go to the Distribute tab. Set the distribution type to Mesh, then scroll down to the Mesh Settings section and middle drag the Earth Sphere object from the Outliner to the Input Mesh field. Increase the number of points to 50. The scatter method is appropriate for this effect. But notice how some of the bolts are getting lost in the cubes that make up the continents. We don't really want this to happen, plus we want a more layered look anyway, so increase the push along normal attribute. This pushes the bolts out in the direction of the helper sphere's face directions. A value of 4 looks pretty good. And as always, you can tweak the values in the strength section to change the effect as well. In particular, you can use small alterations to the random strength attribute to subtly change the height of different bolts. You can also use the random seed value to change the randomization of the bolts over the globe's surface. With that layer complete, let's add our plexus sphere over top of it. Originating from a Latin word meaning network or weave, a plexus effect is essentially just a random assortment of points connected by trails. First, create a new cube. We could actually reuse our existing pixel cube if we wanted, but we'll want this one to be at a different scale than those. To that end, go to the polycube section of the attribute editor and change the cube's width, height, and depth to 0.5. Now create a new mesh network for it and rename it Mesh Plexus along with its repro mesh. Follow the same steps you did with the bolts to distribute the cubes around the globe. This time, set the number of points to 200 and push along normal value to half that of the bolts, so that these new cubes appear halfway between the earth and the bolts. You can also turn off Calculate Rotation, since they're so small that you won't even notice their orientation. These small cubes will serve as the connection nodes for our plexus effect, but we need to draw the trails between them now. You can do that by adding a trails node from the waiter. Upon first adding this node, nothing seems to happen. That's because the trails node is set to trails, which only displays trails when the network objects are in motion. Instead, switch to connect to nearest. This setting will draw trails from a point to a certain number of other nearest points, rather than by motion. Increase the trail scale to make the lines easier to see. However, at only one connection, the plexus effect is a little thin, so increase the count value to 3. 
you'll also need to increase the max trails to 500 to accommodate all the extra trails. Then adjust the trail taper graph so that the trails remain the same size from start to end. You may need to readjust the trail scale after to compensate. To smooth out the jagged edges in the workspace, turn on multi-sample anti-aliasing. And that's a quick and easy plexus effect completed. To round out the layers of our globe, let's add a pixelated ring around it. In this case, we will reuse our pixel cube. Create a new mesh network for it and name this one Mesh Ring. This time, we won't use the Earth sphere as a guiding object at all. Instead, set the distribution type to radial. Increase the number of points to 250, then scroll down to the radial settings and set the radius to 55. Also set the radial axis to ZX to change the direction to the ZX plane. That's our base ring already done. Next we need to add some layers to that. We can do that by replicating our existing ring over and over using a replicator node. In the replicator tab, set the number of replicants to 6. MASH replicates the ring with its default values, but that's not exactly what we want. Looking at the settings, you can see it's actually moving each replicant negative 2 units in the z-axis. However, what we actually want is for the ring to scale progressively bigger. So set the offset position z to 0. Then go to the scale section and scale the replicants in the x and z direction by 0 0.13. Now we get a much more full looking ring, but it's kind of boring like this. Luckily, we can use the Strength section to fix this. In this case, just adjusting the random strength slider gives our ring these nice peaks and valleys. The last thing we'll want to do is transform the rotation of this ring a bit so that it isn't so flat compared to the Earth. To do so, we need to add a transform node. Give the ring an X rotation of 25 degrees and Z rotation of 10 degrees. Now the ring has a nice lean to it. That pretty much finishes up the layers of our globe, though you can feel free to adjust or add even more effects as you please. In the next movie, we'll show you how to animate these elements.